Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Tropical Edition. Great to have you with me here. Take a look at this off the southeast coast of the U.S. We're going to be watching an area of low pressure that could become a subtropical storm over the next several days and affect parts of the Carolinas, the Mid-Atlantic, and eventually parts of the Northeast. We'll get into all the details along with Hurricane Nigel. Is it just destined to be a fish storm or will it come close to the Azores? And this next system coming off the coast of Africa, the Cape Verde season, is alive and well out here. You can see we're going to be watching a big old tropical wave traversing across the Atlantic, especially this weekend into next week. Let's get into it. And here's Hurricane Nigel out here. Look at the buzzsaw here. Yeah, this is looking like a pretty formidable hurricane. I bet you're breathing a sigh of relief over here in Bermuda as the storm is going to pass to your east. Look at that. That is one massive eye. And as we take a look here, we can do a little bit of a cross section here. Look at this. This is a perfect donut shaped storm. It's got a lot going for it right now. Perfect inflow and outflow. So the European model here, this is the model of choice we're going to be looking at first, and then we'll transition over to the GFS. As you can see, this really starts to get cranking off the southeast coast. Our potential for subtropical low pressure here as we go through the 21st and the 22nd. You can see the European model starting to close off an area of low pressure here uh, right around uh, on the 22nd. So we're getting into Friday morning and Friday afternoon here. Where this system could actually pack a little bit of a punch as it comes to the outer banks here, according to the European model. I'll show you what the GFS does momentarily, but here we go. European is a little more optimistic taking this completely off the mid-Atlantic coast by this point. High pressure blocking to the north, deflecting this towards uh, the northeast. You can also see there's a little bit of a trough in this area that this is following. So... The timing on this trough is very key to getting the system out of here without hitting uh, the rest of the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, and eventually Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland here. But high pressure building in behind it pretty quick here. But look what's filling right in behind it. And I caution you because look what's going on down here in the Caribbean as well. This looks actually pretty interesting. This looks like some very torrential rains around Jamaica as we get right around the 26th here at 8 a.m. I did talk about this in my previous segment on Monday evening. So, yeah, this is a continuation of that. And look what starts to happen here. We start to have pieces of energy break off of this area. So this is going to be a hot spot area as well as potentially the Western Caribbean as we go through the end of the month here. And look at this. Yeah, this is a lot of tropical moisture. Whether this forms into something again uh, next week, we could be looking at a repeat here with more heavy rain here along the Carolinas. I know that's not what you want to hear, but look at that. That pinwheels retrogrades westward here as this area of high pressure really starts to block this system from going any place to the north. So for Hurricane Nigel out here, will it just be a fish storm as this blasts up to a Category 2? Maybe a low end 3, we'll see. But look at it, it's running around this periphery of high pressure. Will it affect the Azores? Well, here it is, the closest to the Azores on the 22nd. You see the western Azores over here, so it's way up here. There may be some outer bands, definitely some high surf and waves going on, but it looks like you're going to get off pretty good here at the moment. And if we take a look out here in the rest of the MDR, look at this. This system coming off the coast of Africa looks pretty impressive here. Wednesday into Thursday, it comes right off the coastline here. And look what starts to happen as we go into the weekend, the 23rd into the 24th. This thing definitely looks like it's becoming our next tropical storm here. And it's riding around the periphery of this high-pressure system due west. Now, what happens here? Does it blow up and start to recurve? Or does it stay weaker? Well, so far towards the 26th, we're bringing it just to the northeast of the Leeward Islands here. And as you can see, look what starts to happen here towards the 27th. It starts to bear down on the Leeward Islands, but it starts to strengthen pretty rapidly and recurvature kind of in the direction of where Nigel is right now. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this. Let's take a look what the GFS shows. All right, so as we take a look at our GFS model, let's see how that compares to the European model. So here it is, the 21st GFS, our East Coast system becoming potentially a subtropical storm. Whether this becomes fully tropical, I highly doubt it, especially with all the cooler 
water that's been upwelled here. But look at here, high pressure blocking to the north. It looks like eastern North Carolina as we head through Friday morning is looking pretty nasty here. And look at the GFS just wants to bring this way up and ruin everybody's weekend here from the mid-Atlantic, northeast, and southern New England. Look at this. This this would not be an ideal solution. We're hoping that this, you know, that the European model is a little more correct here. But it does start to move off to the east as high pressure does start to build in. Again, you can see that trough trying to bring this system off to the northeast and clipping parts of Nova Scotia into the 24th into the 25th as it does so as it blows continues to blow up into low pressure. Now behind it, just like the European was showing, look at another system tries to form off the North Carolina coast. You noticing a pattern here? There is a stalled out frontal boundary that's kind of stuck. It's these old fronts this time of year you have to watch. And look at that. That does try to spin something up again, maybe potentially subtropical here. So it's something we will definitely have to keep an eye on. It does bring it up towards Nova Scotia and New Brunswick towards the 30th. But we have plenty of time to watch it. Yeah, look what's coming in behind this. Let's uh, take a look at our... First, let's look at our hurricane out here. Yeah, it keeps it well north of the Azores. That's good news. But here is our system, our Cape Verde system. Here's where it's developing. GFS is keeping it farther to the south here. Take a look. It's farthest to the south than the European is. Weak at first, but look what it does. It brings it right towards the Leeward Islands here in the Lesser Antilles towards the 26th. So this is a solution we're going to have to really keep an eye on here. Look what starts to happen. This starts to really blow up into a storm. I'm a little bit concerned. You know, this is one of the first runs that has done this. So, yeah, if you're in the islands here, please keep an eye on this because this is something we definitely need to keep an eye on if this trend becomes a thing. But I do caution you, this is, yeah, this is showing a major hurricane crashing onto Puerto Rico. This is the 29th, but look how far out that is. That's 10 days. This is just one model run, of course, blowing it back up into a major hurricane and approaching just east of the Bahamas come October 1st. We have plenty of time to watch it and another storm out here. Now, what's happening here across the Caribbean on the GFS as we get into next week? Is it showing those big tropical waves? Are you going to get those heavy downpours you need in Jamaica or the Cayman Islands? Let's see here. This is dry this week for the most part. Maybe some showers by the weekend, some light showers. Then we start to get into some heavier gully washers here. Look at the Gulf of Mexico. It's clear as a bell up here. But Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, you could be seeing some heavy rains as we get towards the 26th, 27th, 28th. Look at this. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this run. That that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit concerning, but it's only one run and it's pretty far out. So we'll keep an eye on it here. Mid layer dry air here, thanks to tropical tidbits. There's our hurricane Nigel making a clean exit here. That's some great news. But there's our southeast system, plenty of moisture to work with. Our next system here, the Cape Verde system. Watch the moisture just funnel up the east coast here. There is some good news though. Dry air from that. Uh, ridge up in Canada will help infiltrate some of the system, keeping it more subtropical. If it does develop, look at the European model, though, keeping a lot of dry air initially on the western side of this system. So it's something we'll have to keep an eye on there. There's the moisture plume coming there across Western Caribbean by later next week. So taking a look at sea surface temperatures here, thanks to Tropical Tidbits. Yeah, look what our previous storms, Lee and Franklin, left. A lot of cool water behind them. Starting to warm up here off the southeast coast. Look at the MDR, though, looking very, very toasty like bath water. Even up here off the coast of Newfoundland. Look at that. Gulf I am shocked there's nothing developing in the Gulf. Caribbean will also have to watch here as well. Now, as we get into the Western Caribbean, take a look at this. Yeah, as we get into the weekend, not too bad. You know, some showers here anywhere from 13 to 26 millimeters. Eke out about an inch on average here. But it's next week. We really start to pile it up here. Look at this around Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. By the end of next week, the 29th, we could see upwards of 80 to maybe 100 millimeters of rain. That's in excess of three to four inches. Now getting into the Eastern Caribbean here, Lesser Antilles down and through uh, Grenada here and 
into Trinidad, Tobago. Look at this. As we head through the weekend, we're going to see a tropical wave move through. Look at that. And there's our potential tropical system. So, yeah, we will be picking up some rains here later this week and the next week, upwards of close to 70 to 90 millimeters. That's a solid two and a half, three inches of rain. And look at that right around Puerto Rico, 40 to 60 millimeters right around two to two and a half inches of rain so into the eastern pacific here we only have tropical storm kenneth to talk about here not too much to talk about other than that it's really surprising it's almost surreal that the pacific both in the eastern pacific and the western pacific are looking very quiet and look at out here with the exception for some monsoon rains here around the philippine islands it's not looking that bad in fact as we go through the end of the month here yeah, there's some big heavy rains in here across the western part of the Pacific here into the Philippines, uh, southern part of Vietnam here. But, for you know, for the most part, this doesn't look like it's really developing into too much of anything. HRRR Future Radar, let's take a look. We got that departing rainfall here as we head throughout the overnight hours into Wednesday morning in New Brunswick and northern part of New England. That is going to leave way to a nice day here as high pressure builds in. All eyes are on our southeastern low pressure system. Here is also a mesoscale convective system. Maybe another one trying to crop up here into parts of the Midwest. But let's take a look as we go throughout the morning hours of Wednesday. Yeah, it's going to be Florida for the most part. The first part of the day that gets hit with all these gully washers. Look at this as our system really starts to get cranking here off the Florida and Georgia and South Carolina coastline here. Now, as we head throughout the rest of the east here, look at this. This is actually looking pretty nice. Uh, you have to go way up here into parts of the Dakotas to get into some problems, but you got to watch these areas here into parts of the Southern Plains, Mississippi River Valley as well, because we could be seeing some strong thunderstorms in some of these areas. So keep an eye out for that beneficial rain, though, coming out of it. Look at the northeast, though, in the mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley. Looking really, really nice. All right, so weather for North America here, especially Canada and the United States. Let's take a look here as we go in time. Yeah, we're looking at that big old nor'easter here winding up in the Canadian Maritimes. It's keeping things windy, cool, and rainy, but it's taken along with the rain with it here north of Newfoundland as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. But look at, we got a little area of low pressure here across central Canada. That's not going to really amount to much. That's some good news. But look at here, we got some strong to severe thunderstorm potential here across parts of the plains. Now look how clear it is here across eastern Canada and the Great Lakes northeast and the Ohio Valley. Let's just zoom out. You can see there actually is not much weather going on here on the North American continent. As we go into the 21st and the 22nd, going into your weekend here, you're getting a very nice weekend here across most of Southern Central Canada, across much of the United States. The only areas that it will be of concern here across the plains, it looks like. Look at this big area of high pressure here building across Eastern Canada and the Northeast. And as we head towards the 22nd into the 23rd here throughout the weekend here, we start to see evidence that the Canadian area will be dominated mostly by high pressure, maybe a little bit of some problems here with some showers uh, and some thunder showers. But that blocking high starts to retreat off the coast. We'll see what happens here with our East Coast low. But you can see Colorado low starting to develop here. Will they actually come out into the plains, cause some trouble? Well, let's take a look. We're going to go out in time here. There is some strong to severe thunderstorms coming out into the plains here. This is very early in the morning on the 24th, so Sunday morning, not looking good. Most of Canada here being dominated by high pressure. You have to go to western Canada here to get into some very stormy weather. And look what's waiting off the coast here, the Pacific Northwest and western Canada. A massive low pressure system. And we're also dealing with strong to severe thunderstorms extending from Iowa down into parts of Texas here. Arkansas and Missouri so watch out for that it could be a stormy end to the weekend here but we're dominated by high pressure across much of the east unless you're in the mid-Atlantic and parts of North Carolina that's where you're looking at that potential coastal system now as we get through the 26th into the 27th we're starting to see a common theme here that blocking Canadian high is is not able to move that far east here so what we got going on here is this area of low pressure and our coastal low stuck 
So where they are, they will stay. And look what happens here across North America. That Canadian high just continues to build across the Northeast into parts of the Ohio Valley. And yeah, these systems really get hung up. This is the 28th. The pattern just breaks down into a massive stagnant pattern. This is almost like resembling one of those Omega blocks. It's kind of crazy. But look what happens across central Canada. This next low pressure system will be trying to head east into this as well. So the pattern is really stopped up at the moment. This just doesn't look good for areas that could actually see tremendous rainfall over the same areas over and over again. Canada, Central Canada, Stormy, Eastern Canada, not so bad. And here's a quick word from my affiliate. Stay with me here. I've got plenty more weather right after this. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. And for my Canadian viewers, let's take a look at your rainfall. It's mostly confined with that departing nor'easter here up and through parts of southeast Canada. We will get some rain showers here across parts of Ontario and Quebec, mainly in the northern part of the provinces. Then we start to pile up some rain out here and some mountain snow as we get into the uh, western part of Canada as we get towards September 28th and 29th. So yeah, there's a kind of a hole here from Hudson Bay down and through the southern and central plains. But yeah, eastern Canada seems to be picking up a lot as the west here as well. So here's the GFS model per precipitation. Look at this. Yeah, this is through the weekend. This is just terrible. Hopefully this solution is not right. I mean, this is the GFS, two to four inches of rain from the Carolinas through the mid-Atlantic into southern New England. That would be a terrible weekend. And then as we continue in time, we just pile a little bit on top of that off the southeast coast here. Look at here in the plains, too. That's going to be with some severe weather, although you definitely need it here in the parts of Texas and Oklahoma. Two to four, maybe five inches. That would be good for you. Now, here's the European run for precipitation here. Take a look at this. Yeah, this is a lot more optimistic for the East Coast. It's still getting clipped here in the parts of coastal North Carolina, South Carolina. But look at that. We eke out a very nice weekend here from the eastern Ohio Valley, Pennsylvania, New York, and to southern New England. That looks great. But look at here across the plains. You are getting some much-needed rainfall out here, though. Your temperature forecast here for Wednesday. Look at this. This is not too bad here across the northeast, upper 60s, lower 70s. Even Texas here, yeah, we have a few hundreds, but it's mostly 90s. As we continue in time here, look at even Florida's down into the 80s here with some showery, thundery conditions here with that tropical wave just sitting off the coastline. Right now, it's not really that tropical. You could consider it more of a standard low-pressure system. But yeah, as we go in time, you can see the temperatures are going to be held from the Carolinas, uh, the eastern coast, especially of Florida here. They'll be held down as those rains kick in. But look, at we're warming up here across the northeast into Friday, 70s, mid to upper 70s in some areas, 77 there in Cleveland, 76 in Rochester, 75 in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton there. Yeah, and southern plains do start to warm back up, but you will have some severe weather outbreaks here as well. Some much-needed rain coming out of it, but look at the trough kicking out across the west here. We start to push those temperatures here across the east back into the upper 70s here through the Ohio River Valley. And look at this, temp very temperate and nice here across the northeast as we head throughout your weekend. Lots of 70s. And to Monday, September 25th as well, more 70s. And look at this, we don't really have any major large-scale areas of extreme heat or any coolness, except here in parts of the Rockies. A extended outlook from hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Take a look at this, yeah. Wednesday through Sunday here, 
you can't ask for better weather here. It is sunny straight through. We'll have to keep a eye later on in the weekend. We may have some showers with that potential coastal system. But so far, the European models taking that off to our east. Look at these temperatures. Highs generally into the upper 60s, lower 70s, and lows down into the 40s for great sleeping weather. Enjoy. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at Weather Eastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me. Question or comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out.